Good morning, everyone. It is great to be with you this morning. I'm Steve. This is Lisa. We are delighted that you're joining us today for our Harrogate Vineyard online Sunday service. So we want to welcome you and say hello, and then we'll turn it over to Danny and Susan for some worship, and then on to Nick, and he will be sharing today's talk in our new sermon series, Going Deeper with God in the Psalms. First, we would like to say happy 4th of July, and that of course has a specific connotation for us Americans, but I didn't realize until yesterday that here in the UK, the 4th of July is National Thank You Day. So even in the midst of times, it's always good to be thankful for the organizations and the people who have done so much in, uh, in our communities to keep us going and to provide support uh, and care throughout this time. So thank you. Perhaps you could take a moment today to think of someone that you are really thankful for and give them a call or a text and let them know. As a specific point of gratitude, we like to say thank you to all of you, those who have contributed so far to our collection for the Women's Refuge in Harrogate. It's exciting to be able to sponsor the refurbishing of a family room at the Women's Refuge. And if you'd like to contribute, you can find more info on our church website, harrogatevineyard.org.uk. So it's wonderful to have you guys with us this morning. We look forward to seeing you all soon in person, hopefully. Now over to Susan and Danny, and followed by Nick, who will be sharing this week's talk. Over to you guys. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its, its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ and to know that this love that surpasseth knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. We live for you, we live 
stretches round the world, walks through every war. Your love searches for the lost, makes the foulest clean, reaches even me. Binds up every wound, steps into the dark. Your love finds the left behind, holds the poor and weak, fights for even me. Your love, your love, you love, you love us all the same. same. Your love, your love. You love us all the same. You love, you love, you love, you love us all the same. You welcome the lover, the hater, believer, the doubter, the mighty, the broken, the pure and profane, the selfish, the giver, the loser, the winner, the righteous, the sinner, all the same. You welcome the lover, the hater, believer, the doubter, the mighty, the broken, the pure and profane, the selfish, the giver, the loser, the winner, the righteous, the sinner, all the same. You love us all the same. You love us all the same. You love us all the same. You love, you love, you love us all the same. You love, you love, you love us all the same. You love, you love, you love us, you love us all the same. trusting in the Lord's and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God and you will be secure, feasting on his faithfulness. Quiet your heart in his presence and joy and pray. Keep hope alive as you long for God to come through for Stay away from anger and revenge and keep envy from your hearts. Those who trust in the Lord will live safe and sound with blessings overflowing.
faithful one, so unchanging, ageless one, you're my rock of peace, Lord of all, I depend Yes, Lord, we love your presence. We are so grateful for your faithfulness. We declare the truth that your love is our anchor. You are a firm foundation for us in such turbulent times, and we respond with our hearts and minds in surrender to you. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Life is unpredictable. It always seems to catch us out when we least expect it. Relationship difficulties, illness, losing a job, losing a loved one, being let down, feeling betrayed. I'm sure you may know someone who always seems to find the silver lining in every cloud though. You know, they're always looking past the current challenge to the next blessing. And, and I think we can often beat ourselves up that we're not good enough when we respond to life's unpredictability with anxiety, worry, stress, and, and not feeling full of faith. But I would suggest that we can take heart that most people are like us. Most people struggle in difficult times, questioning ourselves and even questioning God. Just look at the millions of people watching England playing in the Euro 2020 football tournament. If you're not a sports fan, England played the Ukraine last night and, and I would suggest that before the match that most people approached it with a sense of fear and foreboding. I know that, that I found myself settling down for an evening of entertainment fully expecting England to lose. I was already in a state of high stress and negativity uh, which is generally the state for most football fans I think um, and throughout most of the match, those of us watching would have experienced the ebb and flow of celebration and sorrow, excitement and panic. Uh, quick spoiler alert, don't listen for the next 30 seconds if you don't want to know the score. Maybe you've got it ready to watch later on today. Bizarrely enough, for England, we scored quite early um, and we actually were doing quite well, but then they got back into the game and there's there's always that point where it feels like things are going a little bit wrong. Um, you know, you have that sense of like, things were okay, but now we're going into a time of trouble. Um, why can't we score? Why are the other team looking like they're kind of coming back into the game? Uh, if you're like me, you're sitting there going, why can't the players and the manager hear what I'm shouting at them through the television screen? <laughs> I bet so many people in times like this, in games where there's so much riding on it, turn to prayer. You know, praying out, please God, let my team win, but don't listen to the prayers of the Ukraine fans. You know, um, all of that weird stuff that goes on in our heads. But, you know, there's that desperate hope for something. And on this occasion, wonder of wonders, England actually won the match 4-0. Who would believe it? And we go through to the next round overwhelmed with relief, rejoicing and gratitude. Our hope has been fulfilled. 
and then we will start the roller coaster of emotion again in a few days' time. It's a great story of moving from panic to praise, from lament and complaint to thankfulness and rejoicing. And it works quite well for this morning's talk, so I'm glad we won, because it wouldn't have worked quite as well for my analogy if we'd lost. But as we continue our journey into the Psalms, uh, we're looking at a psalm this morning that expresses those emotions of lament, hope expressed through prayer and reassurance. So Psalm 13, it's a, a psalm of lamentation. Now, psalms like this, which express our feelings in times of disorientation, distance from God or struggle, they make up roughly a third of the book of Psalms. We often have our go-to encouraging psalms that we love to quote. There's, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my light and salvation, whom shall I fear? Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light on my path. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How encouraging. But a whole third of this book is made up of expressions of sorrow, complaint, crisis, fear. Leslie Allen said these poems are companions that understand. We ourselves find comfort that these writers understood difficulty, confusion and desperation. I love that they're really earthy and real, unafraid of just laying it all there, laying it all out there before God. So let's read Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. Amen. I love the poetry in these words, uh, just like the best songs that stick in your brain uh, or come to mind at the right time to complement the emotion that you're feeling in that moment. The, the repetition of how long, how long, how long. You can really feel a sense of anguish from the writer here. And, and as, I, as I read it and as I looked over this earlier, I just thought, you know, maybe you've had one of those moments where it seems like a new challenge arrives, but in that moment of pain, you realise it's highlighting a pattern of struggle. Maybe a habit you've been unable to break, a, a health condition that keeps flaring up, or even a disagreement with your spouse that never quite gets resolved. And you think, how long? How long must I live with this? God, can't you help me? Make a change here. And here, the Bible shows us it's okay to have those thoughts and to express them to God. That's okay. And then we've got this wonderfully gutsy imagery of wrestling with my thoughts day after day. How long will my enemy triumph over me? And often we read that as, as an external enemy. You know, like maybe there's like an, an office bully or somebody who's always pointing out your faults and failures. You know, maybe there's somebody who's trying to um, put you down. Or maybe it's just uh, circumstance in general. But I wonder if possibly the enemy here could be the thoughts that we wrestle with. You know, perhaps it says we're wrestling with the thoughts and this enemy is against us. Perhaps it's expressing what many of us experience, times of anxiety, worry, doubt. When we rehearse words that have been spoken over us, when we tell ourselves we're not good enough, that we don't deserve to be loved. If you're like me, 
you'll have times of wrestling and battling against that inner voice that seeks to undermine your confidence, that speaks all your worst fears and reminds you of all your failures. And in times like this, we find in Psalms of Lament a vital expression of ourselves to God. It enables us to cry out to him for deliverance from our distress. A guy called Walter Brueggemann says of the many psalms of lament and complaint, Psalm 13 is the clearest and the purest example uh, because in, in both plea and praise, the speaker places all trust in the Lord. And that's a really good model to follow. Uh, there's three parts to this psalm, you know, three distinct points that we go through on this journey. Um, you know, it's just six verses, but the first couple of verses begin with complaint and lament. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? Uh, but that lament then leads into prayer. Look on me and answer. Lord, my God, give light to my eyes. And then we go into verses five and six, which express thankfulness, gratitude, rejoicing, reassurance in who God is. I trust in your unfailing love. He has been good to me. And I guess that was my psalm last night, you know, beginning the evening. How long, oh Lord, will England have to wait for another major tournament win? And then lead us through to the next round, Lord, is my prayer. And then I will trust you and remember the triumphs of our history, standing on previous truth. I love that, that we have these poems and songs in the Bible that express all the range of our human God-given emotions. Look at the, the song that we sang earlier, Faithful One. It declares how faithful God is, but yet it gives us a space to our need to express that. I call out to you again and again. Within the Psalms, we find a vocabulary, uh, not just for pain, but also for mental anguish, loneliness, victimization, political and economic oppression and bereavement. There's so much depth that we find in the Psalms when we, you know, when we read through and we don't just skip over to the next encouraging one. And when we do that, we find the content of the Psalms of Lament reassure us regarding God's interest in hearing about all aspects of our experience. And ironically, turning to God to express that full range of emotions and to petition him is actually an act of faith rather than a demonstration of its absence. Trials in life are not signs that God disapproves of us, but they are just part of humanity and of the world in which we live. Jesus himself quoted the Psalms throughout his life. His spirituality was rooted in the Psalms. One well-known example is when he expressed his feeling of abandonment on the cross with the words from Psalm 22. My God, why have you forsaken me? Now, if we're not ashamed of Jesus using this kind of language, we should not hesitate to use it ourselves. And although we find consolation in the lament, my favourite part is the, is the pivotal point where in prayer we turn our eyes, our voice and our focus to God. This transformational moment, this time between times, the transition from mourning to rejoicing. Now, for some of us reading this Psalm 13, it might feel like quite a big shift in tone where it moves into thankfulness and reassurance. You know, we've just been talking about how, how much of a struggle we have, how we just feel beset by the enemy. We can view this in two ways. Firstly, in those first four verses, our cry of need has been articulated. We've vented our frustration and our desperation. And having expressed that, we can then reset, refocus, 
remember who God is and what he's done. You know, I think all of us have had those times where it's almost like the storm comes across. We just, we're all thunder and lightning. And once that cloud has been emptied, then, you know, the sun comes out and we can restart again. So that's one way we could look at it. And another idea is something that Brueggemann suggests, which is um, when this psalm was spoken aloud, in that pause between verse four, you know, my foes will rejoice when I fall, and verse five, but I trust in your unfailing love. In that pause, a speaker would have spoken out something called a divine oracle of salvation, uh, recalling a particular occasion where God's faithfulness was evident, where he provided. Something like, remember when we cried out to the Lord and he came through for us. Remember that time that we prayed for healing together or when we prayed for him to provide and he did. So then moving into the I will trust verses come from a true shared understanding of the reality of God's faithfulness. We can pray, we can hope, we can request because God does indeed keep his promises. So maybe you have found at times that the Psalms have not just brought you consolation, but also given you words to articulate anxiety, distress, fear, disappointment. And if that's not something that you've considered before, then I would recommend reading through them. Maybe start in Psalm 13 today, pick it up and read it later on. You will find comfort that someone has written beautiful, deep, poetic words that express intense emotions that you may never have been able to express before, that you found the words to express your unspoken pain, doubt or questioning. And you'll be reading them in a context like today where it leads you to a place where you can turn from lament to prayer to a place of reassurance in God's faithfulness. So rather than beating ourselves up because we're not always living in the victory, let's embrace the fact that pouring out our hearts like this shows great faith. We don't always have to pretend that we see every silver lining. Sometimes it's okay to acknowledge the storm that we're in. We hope in the Lord in difficult times. We trust that he will hear us and we have faith no matter how small, that he will answer our prayer. We believe we can cry out to him, be vulnerable, express doubt, anger, fear, and yet he will remain. He will remain with us. He will continue to love us. It shows great faith. Take heart. Take heart today and receive that encouragement. So I'd love to end this morning with a short video traveling through several Psalms that express the lament, prayer and thankfulness we've seen in Psalm 13. And as we watch this together, can I invite you to take a moment to trust God with your current struggle. Bring it before him in prayer and remember that he loves you, he is for you, and he is faithful.
Okay, so let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, draw nearer to us even now. We thank you that your presence is with us. Lord, we come to share our hearts with you. We come before you with our lament, our complaint that our circumstances is not what we want it to be. We want it to be honest before you about our struggles. How long, Lord, must we wrestle with doubt and anxiety? How long must we struggle with bad habits or addictions? How long must we battle ill health? How long must we experience loneliness or rejection and feel abandoned? Our prayer is that you would send your power. Calm Holy Spirit. By your spirit, bring transformation, bring us peace, give us yourself and lift us up and set our feet upon a rock. We are desperate for more of you and we thank you for all you are. We remember what you have done for us and we trust in who you are and your love for us. God of hope, we trust in your unfailing love and we rejoice because you have rescued us. Bless what you're doing. Thank you Lord that you are drawing near to each one of us now and that we find consolation and reassurance in your presence. In Jesus name, Amen. So thank you for joining us this week and I hope that maybe you'd be encouraged to spend some time in the Psalms yourself this week. Have a, have a great time and we'll see you next Sunday. God bless. Bye bye.